Invitational Student Cluster Competition Award Ceremony. I'm Dan Olds, joined by Trish Dam Kroger of Intel, the ever gracious Trish Dam Kroger, Happy Satoli, who is head of anything HPC that happens in South Africa, and an empty chair. Oh no, Brent Gorda. I'm back. Who's part of HPC at arm, and he would say the better part. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And we will get going with this. You didn't say that about Trish. Uh, you missed what I said about Trish. No, no, I didn't. It was uh, pretty good. It was good. So I want to welcome the thousands and thousands of you out there. And I take it you can see my slides full screen here? Yes, from the panel. Excellent. Well, that's good enough for me then. We'll just do this show for ourselves. I am Dan Olds. This is the Winter Classic Invitational Gala Award Ceremony and uh, Show Band. And what we're going to be doing today is going through the awards and talking about the competition. I'm going to kick off with doing that. And in case anybody missed it, I am joined by Brent Gorda, Trish Dam Kroger, and Happy Satoli, all titans in this industry. So a real quick look at the competition. In this competition, like other student cluster competitions, university student teams build and design and then optimize a vendor provided HPC cluster. In this competition, the only limitation is that the results are normalized to the 80 teraflops R peak hardware limit. They then race their systems on a number of tasks. In this competition, we had them do LINPAC, HPCG, uh, plus real world scientific applications like Gromax, NAMD, Open Foam, and always a big crowd favorite, LAMPS. There have been a lot of these competitions, and Brett Gorda actually was the co founder of the entire student cluster competition phenomenon back in 2007. There have been 31 competitions so far around the world. More than 130 unique institutions have competed, over 300 individual teams, and more than 3,000 students total. These are a much-needed institution in our industry. This competition was designed to be virtual from the ground up. It's going to continue to be virtual, and it's going to be the fourth major competition joining the SC, which is supercomputing in the U.S., the ISC in Europe, and the ASC, which is the Asian Supercomputing Challenge in China. These students that you're gonna be meeting and learning about here today are the future of our business, future of this industry and the future of science. Many of the students that have competed in these cluster competitions have selected career, careers in HPC and AI. And those of you on the user side and the vendor side know how hard it is to find technical new hires. It's expensive and it takes time. And ask your HR department how much it costs to do that. The thing about this is that these students are self-motivated. They spent their own time learning these applications, learning how to run a cluster, learning HPC. And on our website, uh, you'll see that we have a job board and a resume bank that will give any of you out there who are looking to hire excellent entry-level interns or uh, first-time job seekers uh, that are looking to hire them will be very easy to do. Special competition emphasis is on historically black and Hispanic colleges. They make up our team roster exclusively. And uh, we are actively recruiting teams from these institutions for future competitions. They get overlooked in this. The schools have been very enthusiastic. And I think that this has been a life changer for a lot of these students. That's me, been in the industry a long time. I'm old. I've done a lot with student cluster competitions and been around the horn. Enough of that. Our advisory board, 
who really helped out a lot in helping to put together this competition. We've got the uh, ever effervescent Patricia Dam Kroger, who you also see here, the equally lovely Jack Dongara, Brent Gorda, Gilad Shaner, Callista Redman, Dr. Barali Runesha, who has been a lot of help on the judging, Henry Newman, who's more man that more machine than man, Happy Satoli, who we see right here in front of us, Bill McGrow from uh, Google, informally from Intel, and Tony Bayless, who was a huge help in getting teams together and helping to keep me calm down. So that's notes for me with my slides. I'm going to skip past that. We do have prizes, by the way. We're the only competition that gives out prizes and awards to both students and coaches. And our friends at Microsoft donated a huge number of Surface Go To tablets, enough for every student, coach, and helper. And these judge, are, Dan, and judge? No. Uh, some selected judges may receive one, Brent. Just say it. Yeah. You know, okay. selected. Yeah. Uh, you know how that goes. This is a nifty little box, though. Comes with a keyboard, comes with a screen, comes with a stylus, uh, which Ben, which Brent, you don't use a pen on these. You got to use a special stylus. Otherwise, you uh, kind of mess up the screen. But they're really good. Uh, the reason I'm so happy they did this is they're really good for taking notes in classes. You can just carry them along. They have battery life that runs for, I don't know, six, six eight months, something like that. Might be an exaggeration, but it runs for a long time. Great for videos, great for Zoom calls. It's an awesome thing, and we thank Microsoft a whole lot for it. Then it would be a monster with an M1 processor. Oh, am I off mute? Sorry. <laughs> Brent Gordon just cannot resist it. He cannot uh, hold himself back. Uh, you would love that, Brent. I'm going to, in fact, because of that crack, I'm going to make sure you get one. And make sure you use it. <laughs> okay. So let's just go. Earned one. You just earned one. Yes. Let's go through our team rundown. Uh, we had a total of nine teams. Uh, team Coughlin, Coughlin University, tough go. Great kids, great advisor, tough go. Uh, the faculty advisor was enthusiastic and more fun than you can believe. You've got to watch the video interviews with me and her. Uh, but she's a specialist in cybersecurity, which is not HPC. In fact, it's a lot not HPC. They didn't really have an HPC curriculum for students. And kind of the last straw was when their term ended the Friday before the contest, and they'd been registered to get on their cluster through a VPN from Coughlin IT. And it looks like somebody left the locked the door on IT and shut down the VPN. So they couldn't get back yet. But we want them back. We want them back to prove what they can do when they have the full time to prepare and full access to the cluster. Florida AM, University of the Virgin Islands, it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride for them. They went from two teams of five to one team of three but they kept the strongest players. What's interesting about that is that uh, one of the participants, Robert Dunn, had a score to settle with the student cluster competition. He was a competitor in 2010 when I first started covering them. And it turns out that a business partner for one of the major vendors, no fault of the vendor at all, they sort of, well, screwed over the team I guess that's the right way to put it, that instead of delivering a cluster as promised, they delivered one workstation and said, hey, this will run those applications. This will be fine. Not even realizing that the students were in a contest and they needed a cluster, but in true student cluster competition fashion, people went out and hit the show floor and picked up a few nodes from for them. And there was one man, Robert Dunn Jr., who sat at that keyboard throughout the competition and willed those applications to run on hardware he had no idea how to use because it was completely different. So competing again, now he's a graduate student, was personal. They also, they had a great uh, sponsor who we're gonna talk about later, a mentor, 
uh, Lawrence Livermore National Lab. And there was a last minute hardware upgrade where they went from a cluster of pretty sad CPUs and even sadder GPUs to a shiny new cluster that had great up to the minute CPUs and four A100 GPUs. But when I say last minute, I mean this thing was taken out of the cardboard boxes and installed on Sunday before the Monday competition. So they didn't have any chance to break it in. In fact, Lawrence Livermore didn't have a chance to break it in. So they ended up finding a lot of, well, problems in that cluster. But still, their performance surprised me. Tennessee State, had another tall mountain to climb, no HPC resources on or off campus. They didn't have much practice time on their cluster. And everybody, because it was again, end of term, was jam packed, including their advisor who teaches five courses a semester, which is a huge load, but everybody did their best. It was just tough. So with another one we want back to be able to prove what they can do. Prairie View A&M, first team to commit to the competition. And Dr. Muhammad, inspirational leader, brings me out of his seat when he talks to me, but that's only when I can get him on the phone, which was rare. But he was great when I did. They're a solid team and another one that we want. We want them all back, but I particularly want this one back uh, to see what they can do under his full leadership. Morehouse College the Harvard of the South, very solid team, highly ambitious. Check out the video interviews with them. They were a lot of fun. Uh, Dr. Alfred Watkins is a great faculty advisor. And I think that this competition is gonna spur a new curriculum and maybe even an HPC lab at Morehouse, which is something they haven't had before. So this could be the starting of an HPC revolution there and I'm really glad to see that. You see Santa Cruz. Every student on the team stuck with the competition. Huge, that's a great thing. They turned in some very good performance applications and even better looking applica application briefs. Now that sounds kind of dirty, but it's not. It's the reports that every team had to turn in with every workload that they ran. and. They did a fantastic job of that, explained everything very well. University of Houston, this is a power pack team, all PhD all the time, and their students specialized in HPC. The faculty advisors were deep in HPC. I, I mean, for instance, Leonard Johnson, their lead faculty advisor and coach has been to every SC conference since day one and worked on a number of top 500 computers. And I see Trisha's head nodding, so I think she knows him, perhaps. Might be familiar with him, maybe not. This is a very, really cool team. Uh, UTEP, University of Texas, El Paso, Team Itzamna. Now, who is Itzamna? Mayan god of wisdom. That's kind of common knowledge. I see even Brent knew that, right, Brent? Yeah. Uh, they started out as a team of five, then four, then three, and settled at two, which is good, but it was the right two. These two guys went at it hammer and tong. They did not miss a beat. They turned in results for every workload, and as I say here, it astounded me. And my threshold for being astounded is pretty high, but they astounded me. Are we you allowed to heckle you as we go through this, John? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, Was absolutely. Pat Teller involved in the, in that team? Uh, team at Zama? Oh, yeah. No. no? I've okay. heard no Pat Teller with either of the t two UTEP teams. Okay. Could have used him. Her? Or her. Yes. Her? <laughs> well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of the other Pat Teller in HPC at UTEP. He's, he's new. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't know him. Um, team Invicta, this team stuck through to the bitter end and it was a bit bitter. They didn't get their cluster until very late in the game. They really needed more guidance and information. And I take responsibility with that. 
but it will be rectified next year. My solemn vow, even if I have to fly down there and pull some folks by the collar in there to help them. Because I want to, th this team was game and they, they really had all the raw materials they needed. They just needed some guidance, damn it. Just a little bit of guidance, a little bit of a roadmap and they would have been fine. So let's talk about the mentors a bit. Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, you love them. They're one of the favorite national laboratories out there. And they mentored both Florida A&M and the University of the Virgin Islands, that merged team, but they also mentored them when they were two separate teams. They had weekly meetings with a bunch of Lawrence Livermore experts. I'm talking like six. Every week they were there. They answered questions nearly round the clock. The only hitch is that everybody thought that it was going to be great using this new cluster. Ah, too late. Not enough time to shake it down. So that was not so great. But it's still, a good place to go learn how to do HPC for those of you looking for work. Oh, yes. Saw the typing back there. Both Trish and I worked at Lawrence Livermore. And they are absolutely a world leader in high performance computing. Yes. They are. And sure. one of the funnest places to work too, I hear. Right? Not bad. Not bad? They do Best birthday place to be. They do birthday parties. Bring in donuts. Well, Tris is just upset because there's no alcohol allowed on site and she's in the wrong <laughs> business now. <laughs> Yeah, what's you're a, a birthday cyclist party like, without champagne? Right. Point. If you're a cyclist like me, there's plenty of cycling around there. So it's a oh, great yeah. place. Both up and downhill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, next mentor, Google, who you've probably heard of. And I suggest using their search engine because they have been great partners with this cluster competition. They sponsored three teams, uh, University of Houston, uh, UC Santa Cruz, and the UTEP Exama team provided three clusters, all CPU of 63 teraflops each. Uh, they wanted to go old school on this. And uh, their support and input uh, in helping to shape the competition was very valuable. In fact, it was invaluable. Intel, Microsoft, HPE sponsored another three teams. Very good clusters, very good mentoring. The Microsoft Surface contribution, how can we forget that? Trish Damkroger's mighty Rolodex came in very handy. And HPE's Paul Royson's calm and steady attitude, I'm very thankful for that because me, I'm a little excitable. And I tend to, well, kind of lose my ass, if you know what I'm saying. And he helped keep things calm and steady. Dell, AMD, the HPC AI Advisory Council and BioTeam all sponsored Team Prairie View and Team Tennessee. And Janet Morse of Dell was one of the first vendor sponsors to sign up, and I'm hugely grateful for that. The HPC AI Advisory Council, our good friend Galad Shainer on our advisory board, they provided clusters for the team, uh, teams. And I can't say enough about BioTeam because there were some couple of teams that were in trouble that could not get together with their mentors, were having all sorts of problems. And I called Ari Schulman from, who I barely know from BioTeam. And he said, let me get back to you. Next day, I had a Zoom meeting with them. They had eight people who all volunteered to help out. And these were hitters. They know what they're doing. They are the HPC SEAL Team 1 for us. And they went in and straightened some stuff out. It was a little too little, a little too late for some of the teams, but they really, really pushed hard. So finally, after what, 20 minutes, it's time for the awards themselves. HPL Linpack which is a staple of student cluster competitions and a particular favorite of Brent Gordas. Let's see how that came out. Third place, University of Santa Cruz, great job. Second place, UTEP Itzama. First place, University of Houston, but only by three tenths of 1%. Can you tell place. us how many exaflops they reached, Dan? <laughs> We're in the teraflops, Brent. Oh, oh, oh. 
It's not the orders of magnitude. Well, yeah, yeah. HPCG, Jack Dungara's second child. He, yes, he did come up with another one. This is the bookend to HPL. Third place, University of Houston. Second place, UTEP Itzama. First place, Florida A&M and University of the Virgin Islands, the merge team of the power of three. This was a big surprise and they took this going away. On their new cluster, it was very impressive. Gromax won some molecular, molecular dynamics. Give Gromax a try. I hear good things. Third place, UC Santa Cruz. Second place, UTEP at Zama. It was within two tenths of 1% between second and third place. First place, University of Houston. Namdi, even more molecular dynamics. Yay, you can't have enough. Third place, UC Santa Cruz. Second place, Florida A&M and UVI. First place, University of Houston. Open foam. You want some CFD? We got some CFD for you. It's open foam. Third place, University of Houston. Second place, UC Santa Cruz. First place, University of Texas El Paso. It's Zama. Lamps. Again, a crowd favorite. More molecular dynamics, but it's lamps. Third place, Florida A&M plus University of the Virgin Islands. Second place, UTEP at Zama. First place, University of Houston. Interview. This is a big deal. And this is 20% of the overall score. And I know that uh, we had Happy Satoli in on a number of the interviews along with Brent Gorda. Third place, UC Santa Cruz. Second place, University of Houston. First place, UTEP Itzamba. Hmm. So, I don't think, you can't tell from those awards because you don't know what the weightings of them are and you don't know the margins of victory. So now we're going to have Happy Satoli give us the big one the overall champion rankings of the Winter Classic Student Cluster competition. Take it away, Happy, and tell me when to flip the slide. Yeah, no, thank you, Dan, and uh, good afternoon, I hope. Uh, it's uh, very early in the morning in South Africa. So I take that uh, it's uh, in the afternoon in most part of the US, and um, I'm really happy uh, to be here and uh, announce the winners of this competition. As Dan has already indicated, all the teams worked very hard. This was a unique uh, uh, competition, uh, all virtual, and um, the sponsors, the mentors, everybody put um, all the efforts and the students. So just being in the competition and managing to submit something, uh, you are a winner. And, and even those who are tempted, you are the winner. Like Dan said, we want you back uh, next time. So don't think that you are uh, going to vanish out of this. No. We'd like to see you. There's still lots of opportunities. So for tonight, um, it was very tough. You saw the results, um, all the teams, how they came. So at the end of the day, it was the aggregate. So we had to get first place, second place, and third place. Let's start with uh, third place, Happy. Yeah, let's start with the third place there. Oh, sorry about that, yeah. Yeah, so the third place, uh, University of California, Santa, Clo Sa Santa Cruz. That's good the job. third place. Very good that's job. That's I want applause from everybody out there. Yeah. Raise your glass. Well done. Are you ready for second place, Happy? Yes. The second place, um, very good team. As you have seen, they did very well with the interviews. University, UTEP, Itzama. The Mayan god Itzama came through for them. Yeah. Very good. Congratulations. Yeah. Now, finally, um, I think from the scores now, you can lead me. Who's Here we coming go. Up? 
first place. The University of Houston. Houston. The PhDs took it. Did very well. Congratulations. And um, I just want to say it was less than it was less than ten percent separating first from second place. Yes. So congratulations to all the teams and all the best. And we wish you all the luck uh, in your careers in HPC. And thank, thank you so them. much. Thank you, Happy. We really appreciate all the help you've given us. So the last piece of business we have is the Bruckner Award. And this started out as being two $2,500 scholarships for the best female and male competitors. It's in memory of Rich Bruckner, who is a longtime HPC journalist. Uh, he was the owner of InsideHPC.com. And he was a big cluster competition aficionado. He would always come and, and find me over there and want to find out what was going on, uh, who was winning, who seemed like they were behind the gun a little bit, that sort of thing. He loved the ins and outs of it. And uh, I changed this from two scholarships to six scholarships because I was so impressed with the students. And I ran up by the board uh, and the board uh, all said, yes, let's do that. Let's spread it around a little bit more. So now we have three $1,000 scholarships for the best male and three $1,000 scholarships for the most outstanding females. And the students were judged on their academic performance, uh, their participation in the cluster competition, their future plans, and the impact the scholarship will have on their lives. And I would like to introduce Trish Damkroger, who will be presenting the reward, the awards for the females. Well, it is quite an honor to, uh, in memory of Rich and his red hat, we should all be wearing red hats. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> but um, really impressed with the, the female award winners that I got to review. So thank you so much for having the opportunity to present there to them. Let me know when you're ready. Let's do it. So I don't, are we, we're doing them all together. Okay. We're doing them all together. There you go. So Jackie Garcia, graduating senior from UC Santa Cruz. She said she learned about HPC and Google Cloud and she actually wrote Slurm scripts Yay. and um, about building and optimizing the cluster. So. She definitely got into HPC if she was writing Slurp scripts. So great congratulations. Absolutely. Big win to Jackie. Very nice. And now I'm going to probably butcher some names, so I'll do my best. I nice. gave you help on the first one. Okay. <laughs> Jackie Garcia, I helped you with that. I can't help you with the others. Well, thanks a lot. Okay. And I apologize up front. I should be able to say your name correctly, but Nazini Bahisti from University of Houston. So here's our, she's a fourth year PhD student and she's focused on designing high performance uh, computing and power efficient algorithms for CPUs and GPUs. Ho, ho. So right up the alley, exactly aligned. Um, and what she got out of the cluster is learning, uh, studying different applications and tools. So that is great too. Um, and a huge shout out, I mean, to the winning team and to Nazini as a female award winner. Fantastic. And last, but not least, RM Flores of University of Texas, El Paso. So she's, what she said is from the cluster, she went from a true amateur to an intermediate, which is amazing that she made that much progress in understanding HPC. She, um, I loved her attitude about wanting to learn through life. So a truly growth mindset. And um, what she said she was gonna do with the money is to build a posture corrector sensor and with a computing. So oh. I can't wait because yeah. all we do is sit over a computer. We can all use a little correction, posture correcting. So thank you, huge shout out um, to the email awards and uh, so happy that I got to uh, get to know you a little bit via your uh, applications. 
Thank you so much, Trish. Really appreciate it. And again, if I didn't say it before, this competition probably wouldn't have happened without Trish's support and Intel support. So thank you again uh, from you hear everybody. That, Brent? Yeah, Brent support, not so much. <laughs> just, you know, I think it would have happened without Brent's support. Hmm. Of course, he invented the whole damn thing back in 2007. I know, that's the problem. But, but I will say that, um, yeah, I have lots of stories about Brent and his support. <laughs> <laughs> that will be good with SC coming up. I'm going to want to hear those. Yes, so indeed. Let's go on to uh, Mr. Gorda's part of this, the Mail Award winners, as presented by the lovely Brent Gorda. Would you like to say a few words, Brent? We can't hear you. We and, like it that we can't yes. hear you, but you might want to unmute. It's the ears are dead. Did that work? That works now. Yes. Okay. So, uh, yes, Dan? I was just going to say maybe you want to say a sentence or two about creating the cluster competition and how thankful you are that I got involved with it. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> so one of, one of the motivations for creating this event in 07 was to bring young, smart people to HPC. I look around in meetings and we all look like Dan and I. Trish is the exception, of course. Yeah. As is happy. Yeah. It's a bunch of aging white males. And that's sad because there are a lot of smart people in this world. And it's not based on gender or ethnicity or even physical location. And so in creating this event, the goal was to expose as many people as possible to high performance computing because it's very addictive. It's cool stuff. The number of orders of magnitude that each of us on the panel here have seen in our careers is astounding. Yeah. We've seen billion fold performance increases in our groups. It's, it's such a great place to be. And looking back, it's been such a fun career. And so I'm thrilled that you all showed up and even if you face some bad uh, situations that's a little bit like our careers that's a little bit like life in hpc don't let it get you down get back up and keep going and that's 85 percent of the game and so i commend all of you for showing up for giving it your best shot and making it over the finish line whether you were crawling or jogging or running you made it to the finish line and it's kudos to you man I really, really commend you for that. Absolutely. And I'm glad that Dan's picked this up. There you go, Dan, there's your plug. Well, there you go. Thank you. Are you ready to present the scholarships, the Rich Bruckner Awards for the most yeah. outstanding male competitors? I am. I would like to say a word about Rich, though. Yes, please. He's a very close, very close friend of yours. 10 years ago, I started a company and Rich was super helpful. He was always the shoulder that I could call up and say, what the hell am I doing? Am I crazy? Am I going left? Am I going right? He was a good dude. Um, yeah. after, after the European events, we would rent motorcycles and ride around the Alps. And you can find some of that material online. It's all PG rated, which is different than Trish's data. So <laughs> go look at Rich's stuff. It's better. Okay, with that, yes. to the award winners. Here we go. So the, the slide three flips Yale now. Award winners are Aaron Brown from Prairie View, Christopher Murphy, and Sayesh Bakshi. Yes. I got to meet a couple of you in the interviews um, and saw your enthusiasm. And I have to say that it's very contagious. When I see someone like Aaron Brown full of energy and wanting to keep going after the shit kicking he took in the event. Am I allowed to say that word? You just did. So I guess it works. Inspirational, man. Keep it up. Keep going. Yeah. Look at places like Livermore for employment. You know, follow up with, with the guys here. And Tony Bayless is looking at all of them. Awesome. Awesome. So um, your positive attitude, Aaron, got you this award. Um, with, with Chris, your open honesty of, I messed up. What's going on here? I don't know how to do that. Just that's exactly how HPC works. You're on the bleeding edge. You're working with stuff that nobody's ever done before. Nobody knows how to do it. And so when you try something and it doesn't work, you let everybody else know so that they know not to go down that path. Come back up to the main road and let's keep going. And then Sayash, 
Um, your team was apparently super appreciative of your efforts here, and that's partially why you were awarded this, this award. So congratulations to all three of you. Thanks again. And thank you, Brent, for doing that. Really appreciate it. And we do have uh, Rich's sister on the listening in the background. I'm pretty sure Mary is out there. If Zoom did a better job of letting me see the controls, I would know. But they have it. A uh, couple more little bit of business to take care of. Recruiting is now starting for next year's Winter Classic, which is actually going to take place in winter probably mid-February, uh, we would like to encourage uh, universities out there to build a team. We want to encourage organizations to become mentors for those teams. We want to get this stuff going quicker as we all get vaccinated. And uh, you can improve your recruiting. You can improve your diversity. You can just improve. Add some of these kids into your, I call them kids, but from my age, everybody is. But uh, nothing demeaning about that. But I want uh, you all to go out and take a look at our resume board and bring some of these folks on and give them a try. You're going to be delighted with what you get. And with that, well, I'm not going to take any questions except maybe from the panelists. But if you want to sign up, you can get more information on student cluster competitions in general sense from there, or you can reach out to me to get information on the Winter Classic Invitational, and I'm pretty easy to find. So with that, I wanna thank everybody for participating. I want to thank our panelists very much. Um, and that concludes our event. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Dan. A big thanks to you for putting it all together. It's a heavy oh, yeah. job, as you know. Yeah, it's been a year, um, and it feels like it. Yep. Yeah. Every second of it feels like it. But uh, thank you to everybody, and we will see you again next year uh, at another Winter Classic Student Cluster competition. Have a good evening. Happy get to bed. And yes. we will see you all soon. Thank, Thank you, you all. so much. Great job. Thank you. Bye bye.